Welcome to PC Jack. Now, as some of you may be aware, with the recent RTX 3000 series and the introduction of GDDR6X memory, it can tend to run a little toasty and a lot of people with the Founders Editions in particular are a bit concerned about their temperatures. Now, in the past, I have countered this by using an undervolt in order to reduce my temperatures on both the memory and the core, but a lot of people are taking things a little further and actually modifying their thermal pads. So today, I finally worked up the courage to dismantle my RTX 3080 Founders Edition and we're going to replace the thermal pads with these Gallied Extremes. Now the ones I'm going to be using in particular are the ones that I've been recommended to use which are the 2mm to use on the front die side and then 3mm on the back side of the GPU. So one thing we'll do is we'll go through the actual process of dismantling the card and then we'll change out the thermal pads and then see what the temperatures are like compared to what they were before. FYI, I've never taken apart my 3080, so this is not a tutorial, more just to give you a rough idea of what it's like to actually go through this process yourself. If you are looking to do this yourself, I'll make sure to include a link in the description for the guide that I use myself. So before I started filming, I've actually already done the before testing, so let's just get cracking on. Okay, so about an hour later, we now have a fully disassembled and cleaned up 3080. I know there's a bit of uh, paste around the die, but that's just off the actual uh, die itself. The die itself looks okay, so it should be fine. I don't want to knock off anything around the side, so I'll just leave it as is for now. So while we've got this disassembled, I thought we'd take a little look. And uh, obviously we got our GPU die here, it's our GA102-200 die. This is obviously the same die that you'd have on a 3080 Ti, 3090. And I'm assuming on the 3090 Ti as well. Obviously, it's a bit more cut down than those ones. And obviously, we've got our GDDR6 memory modules. But here, these are what is getting pretty hot under load. So you probably saw when I was removing the pads that they're very fabric-y sort of design. Obviously, they work, but they're obviously not the best. But hopefully, with the Gelid pads, they should be much better. They're more of like a putty feeling type. And they're quite squishy, so we shouldn't have any issues with mounting pressure when we put the cooler back on. And then obviously here we've got our power delivery going along here and, uh, and that infamous 12 pin over there. So I'm thinking all I'll do now, I've um, given it a clean. So now it's time to get the thermal pads cut to size and then I'll put them back onto the PCB itself and then get everything back on the cooler.
There we have it, the card is all back together now and the pads have been changed along with fresh thermal paste. So now it's time to get this back in the system and see if it actually worked or not. Okay, so that was an interesting process and it's all finished now. There was a slight issue and I actually had to pull the card back apart again because as soon as I installed it the first time, I put a load on the GPU just to see what the temperatures were looking like and our memory temperatures were looking pretty good in the low 80s, but our GPU hotspot was shooting right up to over 100C as well as our core going well up past what it was before. So I obviously done something a bit wrong. And I was trying to figure out what it could be, and then after a bit of reading online, I found a lot of other people had the same issue after initially putting their card back together. Even though the two mil pads actually work on the die side, they do need to be squished down with quite a fair bit in order to make sure there's no mounting issues with the die itself. So what a lot of other people have been doing is taking the card back apart, smushing down the film pads a little bit more on the die side, and then putting it back together so there's better contact between the die and the cooler. So that's what I did, I took the card back apart, and I have to say, the first time that I actually dismantled the card, it took me quite a while as it was my first time and also I was filming it at the same time. So it probably took me about two hours or so, but dismantling it this time took me literally 15 minutes. So I dismantled the card again, did the thermal paste over and also smushed down the thermal pads and then put it all back together and then put it back in the system. And then after testing for about an hour, there's a bit of an improvement. Now this mod isn't particularly for the actual core itself, but if we take a look at the core temperatures before and after, we've actually gone from 75.3C down to 62.1C, which is pretty good considering that wasn't the goal of today's experiment. And then with the hotspot we went down from 86.6C down to 74.3, which is putting us well within that similar delta which we had previously, which is a good sign. And then for our memory, we've gone down from 102C down to 87.6C. Now, like I said, when I first installed this, it was actually a bit lower on the memory temperatures around the low 80s. So maybe messing about with the pads after has kind of lessened the effect they would have, but it's still a bit of an improvement, but I was expecting a little bit more of an improvement. So what I'm thinking I'll do is I'll leave it as is for a while and see how the temperatures get on over time and just make sure that there isn't any issues that I'm not aware of currently. And then maybe what I could do is I could take another pass at the pads and since I've done it a couple of times now, maybe I could get it spot on the next time I try it. So the big question is, is, is it worth actually doing this whole process? I'm going to say it depends. If you are technically minded and you are happy to get your hands dirty and dismantle your card, then go at it. It's a good experience and I found it really interesting seeing how the card is actually put together even closer. And it gives me a bit more confidence in the fact that if there were any issues down the line, I'd be much more confident in my repair skill considering that I've dismantled it a couple of times already. But if you are on the fence and you are worried about damaging something or you're concerned about your warranty, maybe it's not really the right thing for you to do right now. But I have to say, the actual process of assembling and disassembling the card is really not that hard. You'd be quite surprised after just following a guide once that it's not really that difficult to do and if you take your time and follow all the steps, you'll be totally fine. But make sure you understand exactly what you're getting into before you begin. So that's it for today's video. Have you tried to change the thermal pads on your RTX 3000 series card yet? If you have, let me know down in the comments below and if you have, also let me know if you have any tips for me improving the memory temperatures on my card even more. If you're looking for these thermal pads though, I'll make sure to include a link for them in the description. If you enjoyed the video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. If you didn't enjoy the video, then please feel free to leave a dislike, but please leave a comment and let me know what you didn't like about the video. If you're after more PC Drag content though, then make sure to check out my Twitch where I livestream every Monday and Thursday. If you miss a stream though, then make sure to check out my PC Jack VODs channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more with myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Discord. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while also helping to fund the channel and everything I do for you guys. You can find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.